One day, um, I was talking to the Lord and the Lord said to me, can you believe that people think that I'm here to serve them, not them to serve me? And it made me think, stop and think and say, I'm sorry, Lord, but I have treated you like that many times. So initially we come to the Lord because we need, we need him. We see, we start getting into situations where we see that we cannot make it on our own. Normally we see that there's something dark. This is something that we want to overcome and we cannot overcome it. Uh, we see there are cycles that we cannot break. We see some bondage and we feel bounded. And we, and we start searching, searching for answers, searching for God, searching for deep, deeper things. And, uh, and we start looking to fix a problem that we have. And many of us go in different directions different directions once go to the world to fix it with psychiatrists with psychologists with others go with drugs and what it make them feel well good and to numb the pain and try to numb the pain with distraction with tv with movies with uh pop being popular trying to fill up that space that empty space that we have within and there are other ones that we know the answer is God because we know about God, but we don't know how to get it. So we start researching, we start, you know, looking and looking and looking for him to see how he can help us. And we go to him to help us And in our search for that help, we find him because as Jeremiah 29 verse 13 29 13 it says you will find me when you search for me with all your heart and then in 14 the, the beginning says i will be found by you because when you look for helping the lord you will find it but it will be sometimes it can be instant and sometimes it will be a route a route where he brings you into submission and he will help you. He will lead you in accordance of what you need. And he will give you exactly what you need. He will give you, um, he, he will start cleaning your heart and cleaning your heart and cleaning your mind and cleaning your deeds and cleaning what is in there because in the end is what he wants of us. It's not what we think we need is about what he knows we need so then we start with this relationship and when we start knowing him and he just you find him and then you fall in love with Jesus and you find him and you see the movement of the Holy Spirit and and you start feeling his glory and he start I answer you questions and he start revealing him, himself to you with the word with the word of God and he starts moving you toward him and the more you you go and look for him the more you will find him the deep you will go into it and then when we are fully in love with him is when we know that we are a new creation because he creates in us through that relationship a new creation in us we start seeing and desiring the things of the spirit and now the world, we know the world did not satisfy us because we tried it. So then we know he is everything that he will fulfill us. The only answer that we can have that will satisfy us, it will come only from him. So we will start looking for the more because we get to know him we get to know that he's a god of more we get to know that he's a god of more and you start feel, falling in love for him deeply in love for him deeply in love with him 
And when you are in that moment, when your relationship with him is so personal, so intimate, so beautiful, so fulfilling, then out of your heart, you want to serve him. So there are two ways that we serve the Lord. There are people that go to him. Many people that call themselves Christians. Many people that believe that, that they believe in Jesus Christ. They do believe it. But they don't want a relationship with him. They just want to treat him as an ATN. Just go and get what they need and that's it. Go and ask for things and get what they want and that's it. But there are others. So so that in that moment is the Lord. They are have that expectation that is the is Lord God Almighty who's serving them. So we are putting up our, ourselves above God. We are exalting ourselves be, above God where He should be serving us. And he's good if he answers us, but if he's not, if he doesn't, oh, he's not that good. So that is a self-centered mindset. But when we come to him, searching for him as the truth, searching for him, knowing that he's the only one that can give us the freedom, the deliverance, out of humility, we fall in love and then we want to serve him. And it's not out of works. It's not because we owe him anything. We will never pay. We will never pay what he did for us. Because it's not, it's not only when we die. It's not only when we go home, heaven that we get the fullness of him. He gave himself today. He is alive today and he makes himself really, really real, really tangible, really sweet, really kind, really loving. And you start knowing him, Father. <laughs> The Father, <laughs> the Son, Jesus Christ, <laughs> and His Holy Spirit that is always with us, inside of us, loving on us, guiding on us. And we just want to be with Him and serve Him and love Him and proclaim His name and fight for His people. and love his kingdom and fight for his kingdom. Because once we are the new creation, we become children of God. Holy Spirit is the one that show us that we are really truly children of God. So we see manifestations, we see changes in our character, changes in our thinking, and it's not out of knowledge, it's not out of trying, it is not our trying. Trying is of the flesh that will never satisfy the Lord and it will, it will fail. We fail. I tried and I tried and I tried to get out of bad habits, to get out of sinful things. I tried and I couldn't do it. But when I knew Jesus, when I knew the real living God, when I felt his presence, when I saw him, when I found him, then I fell in love and he started changing me. And it is a process of little by little, but the more intimate you are with him, the more you include him in your every daily life, in every situation, in every circumstance. You will learn from him and your life will change. Your mindset will change. It will be reset. You will be a new creation. You will be made of the spirit to a point that you won't like the world anymore. 
to the point where movies won't satisfy you, alcohol won't satisfy you, uh, it, 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 nothing, drugs won't satisfy you, nothing can satisfy you, you know, buying clothes don't satisfy you, going shopping won't satisfy you, having more things won't satisfy you, money will never satisfy you, being famous will never, nothing can, nothing can satisfy you but Jesus Christ, by his, his presence in your life, his Holy Spirit holding on to you, that is what is satisfied, that is what it gives you everything. And you are focusing in him and going deeper and deeper and deeper into him. And we serve him because we love him. And we become strangers in this world. Like First Peter said, I think it's a, just in chapter 1. We are priesthood, a royal priesthood. We become focus in the in the business of our father of heavenly father we are ambassadors of christ and wherever we are we bring his love we are his agents we are super important to god so much so so much so that the enemy wants to take us down he wants to kill us and destroy us but we are not fearful we stand strong and courageous because him, he gave us the strength. Because with God, with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, his name protect us. And our intimacy is what is displaying our holiness. Holiness is not going to church. Holiness is not reading the Bible. Holiness is knowing how many verses. Holiness, all that is beautiful. But holiness is, is letting him move, your Holy Spirit, letting him move, obeying to what he's saying, listening to him, talking to him, making him part of your daily life. And then you will be thirsty to, to pray. And then you will be thirsty to read that Bible like devour it in one day. And then you will want to work and preach the gospel. And then he will talk to you. I have been in situations when I have been with people. I said, Lord, what do you want me to say to this person? Do you want me to tell him anything about you? And he was silent. He didn't say anything, so I didn't say anything. But with some people, he made me talk and preach the gospel. So the Lord is speaking, 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 and the people are ready to receive it. Only he knows when people are ready to hear the gospel. Only the Lord. Sometimes we don't even need to say anything. Only one is smile. Only being loving toward them, only by submitting to him and, 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 and he will shine. You, we don't have to shine. I don't have to shine. He will shine. And wherever we are, because we are with him, walking with him, Holy Spirit, we are serving him. When I got quiet because he did not say a word, and I just love on that people with my attitudes, with, with a sunny disposition, with love and kindness, with building them up with good words, prophesying beauty over them instead of ashes. I serve him. I did not, I did not have to say Christ. I did not have to say, preach and preach and say the gospel. Only only leaving love at that time to that person. I did what was right to my King of Kings and my King of Glory, my Heavenly Father, to whom I belong. And even when we think that we are not working for Him because we are no ministers, because we are not prophesying, because we are not in YouTube, because we are not a pastor or minister in a church, whatever, we don't have a ministry, whatever it is, we are not called to all to do that. We are the body of Christ, meaning everybody has a different job and everybody is so important. If you are a stay-at-home mom, if you are an engineer, if you are everything that you are with God placed you to be, 
you can be the hands and the feet of Jesus. You can be the smile and the love of Jesus right there. You can bring that space into holiness and beauty. And you don't have to say Jesus at all. Just love, love with agape love, 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 love the, with the love that God will give you and you will see the kingdom of God coming into that place. And when you get to someone, because there's always someone in every environment we are, even in our own home, pray, pray, pray. That is the biggest service you can give them and give yourself and give to the Lord. Pray, interceding for them. Lord, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Lord, forgive them. For, I forgive them for being rude. I forgive them for lying. I forgive them for whatever situation it comes across. And you, you, inside of you, you said, a Lord, because you have a stack when you are hurt, there's something in you against coming against you. And you say, spirit of offense, get out of me in the name of Jesus. Spirit of fear, get out of me in the name of Jesus. Spirit of envy, get out of me in the name of Jesus. And you don't agree with any negative spirit. Every time we are annoyed by somebody, they have a problem, but we have it too. And as Jesus said, we have to take it out of us first. Cancel it, ask for forgiveness, renounce it. I renounce the spirit of envy in the name of Jesus. I renounce the spirit of, of, of um, offense. That is a very common one. I renounce the spirit of rejection in the name of Jesus. You are a liar. Get out in the name of Jesus. You have authority as a son, as a daughter of God. You have authority to use his name and to rebuke the devil and not to entertain any thoughts and any, all those words, negative words against you or against others, they are not from you. Those are from the devil and you have to rebuke it and say, no, you are serving God when you are doing that. You are serving God, the Lord Almighty, when you are blessing those that persecute you. You are acting in accordance to the will of God when you forgive them. When you plead for God and say, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. And you invite Christ into that space into the life of your children, into the light of your mother, into the light of your friends, into the light of everybody that is around you, that is working for the kingdom of God, that is serving. So wherever you are, you are very important men and women of God. Even if you don't know about God, even if you don't know about Jesus, let me tell you, you are alive because the Lord is waiting for you to come to him, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Because he's longing to have a relationship with you. He loves you so dearly. He died in the cross for you. He said he wants you. The only thing you have to do is to believe, to accept him. I said, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. And everything will come to place in your life and in the life of your family and everybody that is around you. And even though things won't look like you thought they should, the Lord will give you more than you, you could ever think or imagine because his plans are better than our plans. His ways are higher than our ways. But the Lord Almighty wants to love on you and wants to have a personal relationship with you. He cares about you, 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 you are mighty beautiful beautiful to him he made you in his image he is delighted he's waiting on you he's knocking at the door just waiting for you to open the door and hug him welcome him if you have doubts ask him are you really real do you really exist show me you're real he's a big boy he can take that if you are mad at him Tell him you are mad at him. He loves that conversation. Bring your hurt. You hurt me, Lord. Why did you let this happen? 
Talk to him and he will answer you. Search for him and you will find him. God bless you.